four defections to Jubilee Party that actually shaped perception that Uhuru's Jubilee Party had really successfully managed to edge out UDA from Mount Kenya as far as the 2022 um, elective seats in Central Kenya are concerned. Alois Kinyanjui, Moses Kure's brother, decamped from Chama Chakazi and joined Jubilee seeking the Juja seat. Remember, the Juja seat, the current holder of that uh, seat, Kiumbiri, joined UDA after he was elected with Chama Chakazi. Priscilla Nyokabi, who had shown intent at some point that he wanted to join UDA, that she wanted to join UDA, also the camp to Jubilee seeking the Nyeri senator seat. Remember, Ifri Maina is the one that is going to flag the governor's seat ticket and is going to face off with Mutai Kahiga. In Kirinyaga, Purity Ngirishi, who was seen as an independent candidate in that race, secretly paid the nomination fees at Jubilee and she's going to fly the Jubilee ticket in Kirinyaga, facing off with Anwai Guru and perhaps uh, Mata Karwa. But then the one that shocked many is Nakuru governor. Liki Nyanjui folded the Ubuntu party. Remember, he was the part leader of the Ubuntu party. So it is understood that he folded that party and joined Jubilee party. And so he's going to seek re-election in Nakuru through Jubilee party. I don't know. Sometimes I think what we say, we say as hypothesis. But uh, if you follow this channel, at some point I once analyzed that for the big cities, Kisumu, Nakuru, Nairobi, Mombasa, the interest is not just lying on the candidate. There are many interests within these cities. And for you to win an elect to win the governor seat, you either have to belong to Azimio or Kenya Kwanza. And I opined that if Azimio will field a candidate against Liki Njui to face off with Kihika, the Azimio candidate would, would likely win that seat. And so Liki Njui had no option. If he wanted to defend that seat, the best option was to brand himself around Azimio Laumoje. So that he doesn't, he makes sure that Jubilee does not feel a candidate. There was another candidate known as Stanley Karanja. He was not given that ticket. I think there was a bit of that consensus. So that is what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at this critically, you will realize that UDA, uh, Jubilee Party really benefited a lot from the defections back to the party. And so the question that begs, why do you think that some of aspirants really trooped back to Jubilee, Uhuru's party? And why that was a very good, that strategy was employed well. The scenarios that played for this the, uh, defections to happen. And in my own understanding, I think, that the biggest loser from this defection is UDA. Their script with the UDA, the script by the UDA was to make sure that central Kenya is zoned as a UDA a place. And so there is no any other candidate that should seek an elective seat. Anyone who wants to win was to make sure the perception is created that unless you vie with UDA, you do not stand a chance to win. So in this video, I want to look at scenarios within central Kenya that really saw that mass defection to Huru's party. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to humbly request you to subscribe. Whether this is the first video of April, yes, first video of the month. Today is 1st April. And be on the lookout. There is a, today is Fool's Day. So be on the lookout. There are many people that will be lying <laughs> about many things. So, um, kindly also give us your feedback in the comment section. Tell us what are your thoughts, what is your opinion, and especially about Lake Why would you think 
that leak in Nigeria went back to Jubilee. Now, there is number one thing that happened. Musa Skuria's blunder for Chama Chakazi to join Kenya Kwanza. In fact, this is what happened. When Musa Skuria joined uh, UDA, the Chama Cha, the Kenya Kwanza team, this the plan was that he was going to benefit from leaders who maybe would have been ripped out of nominations, nominations in UDA, but will then troop back to his party, especially people who would want to be still around deputy president, but even not seeking election through UDA. But in the event, he actually lost. He lost because um, the leaders, uh, the aspirants in Chama Chakazi felt like they are now going to compete against the ones that are in UDA. So it will be an intra-competition within that coalition. Now, in the event that was to happen, then they were deemed to lose. So they had no option but to go back to Jubilee, where one, they have an easy way to get the tickets because even the issue of the nominations was not a big issue there. And most of them who are going back there were being given direct tickets. So the blunder by Moses Kure to join William Ruto, and of course, they are also leaders that they will be more comfortable to be with Moses Kuria's, to vie with Moses Kuria's party if it was not aligned to either of the two. Because they will feel that is, if UDA feels a candidate, Jubilee feels a candidate, then these are two, uh, these are two heavyweights. Somewhere in the middle, you can penyeza and you can win your seat. But that arrangement is why even their host of many, in fact, I was, I was, I was, I, I was reading somewhere that there are host of MCS from Kiambu that trooped back to Jubilee. And they're the ones that had really decided to vie with Chama Chakazi. Number two is strategic Raila's absence in Central. But if you're keen, since Raila came from the US, from the UK tour, he has never done a rally in Central. For the last one month, he was, like the whole of March, he was never in Central. This was strategic because there were aspirants that are conserved and they were worried that trying to integrate their individual campaigns and Raila Odinga's campaigns was becoming hectic for them. The only, the only politicians from Central Kenya whom I find uh, are finding uh, this integration very seamless, the only three, that is Kanini Kega, uh, Liki Nyanjui from Nakuru, and Nderutu Muridi. Actually, Nderutu Muridi puts on the blue. He's all, all the time, he's normally in the Zemius blue. The others, so what Uhuru did when these aspirants uh, had that reservation that just allow us to go and sign the Jubilee, Uhuru allowed them to just go with the red. And you will see that most of them now, um, they, they didn't go with the blue, the Zemius blue. They were actually going to now go with Jubilee because the problem was that uh, when UDA went to Central, they sold Raila. They actually went there to sold Raila as a bad woman, or they, they sold Raila as a persona non grata there. So some voters, when they see Raila, they, some aspirants were feeling like we are going to lose simply because we are tied to Raila. So allow us to go fast as Jubilee, so that when a Zimia campaign shall come to be in Central Kenya, but we shall have already got our space. And that's why you will see, in fact, uh, Kanini Keke was being asked the other day, there's a, a billboard in, in, in his area, him with no Raila's R. And just check these posters. There is only one gentleman I saw, I think this guy here, he's seeking, I think, Madeira Parliamentary seat or somewhere, and he was having the Raila's orange, the, the, the big R, the symbolic big R, Rao's R, and all of it, but the rest were allowed to just concentrate and go there as Jubilee. Many people complained that why are they not imaging Raila's as Mio? But I think it was strategic first to seize the mountain. 
Because what UDA was selling was the problem with with, with with the Jubilee was like, okay, it's about Ryla's the problem. So you say, if you fear campaigning for Ryla alongside your elective seats, then just pick the ticket and campaign for yourself. But then, Nyox, I think Priscilla Nyokabi is on record saying that vote for me, for your senator, but in the presidency, vote for whoever you want at some point. So that was allowed. But you know, when Raila goes and Raila and Uhuru goes, they will go now say, vote for this as Jubilee, but in Azimio, the presidential candidate is Raila Odinga. The other thing that President Dan did very strategic is taking charge of Jubilee Party. You know, when he was elected and the fact that he was a president, Uhuru gave the party a wide berth. And at some point, if you remember the Kieleweke team led by um, Kimani Ngunjiri, Ngunjiri Wambugu and um, uh, Sabine Chege were actually complaining that we need direction. You've left us. We don't know what we're going to do. So when Uhuru went back to Jubilee and took charge, that really instilled confidence on aspirants. And that is why when they held the Sagana 3 declaration, remember the Sagana 3, Uhuru was boldly telling the aspirants that don't fear vying through Jubilee Party. Soldier on, you are going to win those elective seats. Just tell the people the truth. Just tell the people what about the track record. So I think to some extent that uh, the, the president's card, because the president's card in 2022 in, in his support for Raila is very simple. He's simply saying, me as a president in the second term, I have achieved X, Y, Z, and I was supported by Raila Odinga after my deputy left the government. That's what the president is telling the voters. So, when he took charge, you know, the, the rebranding was done. Um, after the rebranding, they actually changed the leadership. And there is something that I think people faltered. Eh? I want to tie it with this, huh? When taking charge, huh, the other thing he did was to make sure that he planted leadership of Central Kenya from uh, from the mountain. The leadership of Jubilee Party from the mountain. If you look at the Secretary General Jeremiah Kioni from uh, from the mount from Mount Kenya, the Director of Elections Kanini Kega from Mount Kenya, Vice Chair Murade from Mount Kenya. So when this when 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 this was done, it was done strategic to first brand Jubilee Party as a Mount Kenya party. It was a risk because initially the Jubilee was supposed to be a national party, so uh, there was supposed to be leadership all over. But I I I want to I want to believe that this was an advice from Raila Dinga. If you look at ODM party, the secretary of ODM party, Secretary General, first Secretary General was a young young. And in that leadership, either between Secretary General and Chairman, one must always come from the other. One must always come from the other, if not both. So, that one rebranded ODM party as a, a Nyanza. First, the, the bedrock of ODM as Nyanza. Then the rest is to come and add and give it the national value. Now, that is what Jubilee did. When they went for Jeremiah Kioni, they first branded that party as a central Kenya party. Because initially, ladies and gentlemen, politics, our politics is ethnic. Of course, it will take us time to come from this yoke, but our politics is ethnic. So that gave confidence that look here, nominations will not be biased. And of course, this party is going now to push the ambitions of Mount Kenya. In fact, a party that is now pushing the interest of Mount Kenya is Jubilee Party. That was very strategic. Number four, and I want to tie it to the last, and I think Uhuru Kenyatta, Uhuru Kenyatta injecting funds in bankrolling the party activities. Um, when Sabina Chege was asking the president to give us direction, tell us what to do, I think by that time the party did not uh, the party did not really uh, have activities on ground. So what I understand is you remember the Kananja Kibichu going to ground to do activations. The elected leader Sabina Chege, Kanini Kege, when they went to the ground to do those activations, they were actually bankrolled. And you will see that it's not kind of 
painted red. That really worked well because when people jubilee gained the visibility, the visibility boosted the confidence of aspirants in North Kenya. And even though they seem to have come late, but that worked very well to try to, as where they say, to remove the yellow fever. Because UDA had been there for long. And if you are keen, you realize that nowadays William Ruto holds rallies in central Kenya. But it's only the other side of Meru that he holds stadium rallies. These other places, he either goes to a church, do roadside, church, roadside. But there is no stadium rally that he has held in uh, in, uh, in in Murang. I think the, I only saw the one that he held in uh, in in Kiambu, the thicker one. But like Kipia, no stadium rally. Um, I've not seen Nyandarwa, Nyeri. I haven't seen. In fact, Nyeri, I have He has held any stadium rally and so on and forth. So there is really that much and of course jubilee is also the ruling party so president once told them that look here i'm not mean i might support you ladies and gentlemen what are your thoughts